Welcome on into the Cougar Tracks podcast powered by kslsports.com. I am your BYU insider, Mitch Harper. A historic day for BYU basketball as the Cougars hire Kevin Young, Phoenix Suns associate head coach, now the new head man of BYU basketball. And it's quite the coup for BYU hoops as they move into the new 16-team era of the Big 12 with a lot of momentum, uh, still a bright upside and potential for this program. After a difficult week losing Mark Pope to Kentucky, BYU basketball can still dream big with the hire of Kevin Young. And there's still going to be a lot of work to be done with this hire, but we'll be breaking it down here on this edition of the podcast. Again, you can follow me on X at Mitch underscore Harper. Instagram as well. Follow KSL Sports and download the KSL Sports app today. So it was announced on Tuesday morning, BYU Basketball hired Kevin Young from the Phoenix Suns. Athletic Director Tom Holmo announced, quote, we are excited to announce Kevin as our new head men's basketball coach and welcome him and his family to BYU. We had a variety of excellence candidates and a lot of interest in this position. Kevin is someone we have had our eye on for a while. He has risen to the top of NBA assistant coaching ranks. He has been a lead candidate for NBA head coaching jobs and has been instrumental in developing top-level NBA talent. Kevin will bring a new perspective with an extensive NBA background to our program. He is a phenomenal fit at BYU. He is humble, fun, and super intelligent. Cougar Nation is going to love getting to know Kevin. End quote. Here's what's also fascinating about the announcement, and credit to Matt Norlander from CBS Sports for this. It's the holy grail of scoops, and i got to give him his props for this. Salaries at BYU, they never get reported, hardly ever, because typically they're pretty low. Norlander reports BYU head coach Kevin Young is going to get seven years, $30 million. That's a massive jump. That is a massive commitment to a basketball coach and also to a program that's often viewed in the background to BYU football. BYU football is the program front and center at BYU in their athletic department, but BYU basketball has typically always been second. What a commitment that BYU is showing to men's hoops and understanding the potential of being in the best basketball league in America in the Big 12 by financially committing to Kevin Young. So it's a huge get for the Cougars to land Kevin Young moving forward into the 2024-2025 season. He will continue as the associate head coach on Frank Vogel's bench with the Phoenix Suns throughout the NBA playoffs, which that series begins on Saturday for the Suns. They're the sixth seed in the Western Conference. They'll face the three-seed Minnesota Timberwolves in the NBA playoffs. But my initial thoughts on this hire, as this thing was brewing extensively on Monday night, he brings a perspective and an insight that I think is intriguing, and I think there's a lot of potential. Now, there's, there's some risk involved. When you have a coach that has no, really no head coaching experience at the college level, it could be a little bit worrisome. His head coaching experience was in the NBA G League, NBA D League back in the day. And you look in the archives and, you know, Kevin Young was getting into brawls with Eric Musselman. He was coaching against Nick Nurse. He was coaching against some great NBA minds and people we all know now. But back then in the G League, D League days, uh, no one was talking about those names. But he's gone up against some brilliant basketball minds and done well as a head coach. But it, it's been a minute. And... You know, being the associate head coach in the NBA compared to a college basketball head coach, that's a different world. How does he adjust? What does he do to construct a roster? What's the uh, assistant coach is going to look like on his staff? There are so many questions that he needs to have answered here soon. It's not like he can just wait forever and let this thing drag on. The transfer portal is going to close coming up on May 1st. He's got to get a clear sense of what he wants to do with the current personnel he has and then you know, fill the gaps with the openings that he has. But what a, what a move, though, for BYU and just the overall commitment from their boosters, Ryan Smith, Danny Ainge. BYU is reaching out to them for comment on the search. They're, they're lending their advice, and Ryan Smith is a massive BYU basketball supporter. You know, He's always at BYU basketball games, and not just the, the big ones, too. Like There were games in November against some – 
random team that you have never heard of and you need to Google their name, he's there. Like the man loves BYU basketball, and it wasn't just Mark Pope. Like he loves BYU hoops, and he wants this thing to level up to a higher degree. And I think it potentially can. Will it? We'll see. But the thing is, is that you know Mark Pope leaves BYU basketball in a great place. They're in a position of strength, as Tom Homo said. But there was still more to be had. NCAA tournament wins, winning conference tournaments, winning a conference title. Going to be tough in the Big 12. In a place that on Kevin Young in year one, maybe a little bit unrealistic. But still, there's a lot for him to accomplish. It's not like he's stepping into a program where how does he replicate what was left behind? No, there, there's, there's so much more to be accomplished and to be had. And also to have success with LDS recruits. He's an LDS man who worked with Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, Joel Embiid. The, the list goes on and on of the guys that he has coached and worked with. It's an impressive hire. And I think for, by BYU standards, I think by any standards in the basketball world, this is a home run hire. But I think for BYU especially, with how limited their coaching pool is, it's an amazing get for BYU because – you know, he was in the hunt for the Brooklyn Nets job, the, the Charlotte Hornets job. He's been linked to so many head coaching searches in the NBA, and to get him is impressive. And I think it also speaks to you're at the highest level of college basketball. Five years ago, you know, Danny Ainge viewed him as from afar as, you know, the guy that BYU should pursue back then in 2019. But that was the WCC. That was not the Big 12. If Kevin Young has success in the Big 12 – he sure is going to be on the fast track to being a head coach in the NBA, maybe a better situation than what the Brooklyn Nets were currently being the 11th place team in the East. So I think it's a win-win for all parties involved. A lot of work to be done. There's no assurances, and you got to hit the grind on you know, building this thing up and seeing what you can turn it into in his own identity. But I think it's going to be a fascinating hire, and I think it's a great one for BYU basketball. I reached out to... Everyone on, on X asking for their feedback as to you know, what your reaction is to BYU hiring Kevin Young as the new men's basketball coach. And we'll just go through some of those reactions. Waffle Todd, he writes, All of the NBA writers seem excited, but my concern is whether he'll be able to quickly recruit and build a team to compete in 2025-2026. Not worried about X's and O's, worried about building relationships quickly. I think that's a fair critique. And I think that you know the recruiting side and the whole college basketball dynamic – is going to be so you know fascinating how Kevin Young adjusts, but I think he's got a you know humble personality. I mean, I, I got to get to know Kevin Young a, a lot myself. You know, I've I've known the name for many years from afar, uh, but really just always looked at him in this search as well. He's an NBA guy. He's the highest paid assistant in the NBA. How is BYU going to ever land him? And now that it's here, uh, you know, you start to ask around and get more intel on who this guy is, and the common theme is just he's a man of you know, that's really calm, collected, but he's got a great personality that people can connect with. Karate Kid writes on X, me likey. I think a lot of Cougar fans share the same sentiment. Jimmy Chess writes, thank goodness it's not Burgess or a Utah County high school coach. That, this was a pipe dream come true. You know, and I think that's a, a good point. You know, Chris Burgess was in some ways a polarizing figure, but I think all the commentary about him to this point was still accurate that he has a lot of connections in the recruiting scene. He knows who the key LDS prospects are and also in the state, and he could, you know, hit the ground running. And I think that... You know, if BYU was lucky enough to maybe get him as an associate head coach next to Kevin Young, that would be an epic hire to pair up Young in his background with the X's and O's and offensive basketball and line it up with Burgess, who knows the college basketball world today and has so many connections, not only here in the, the States, the international waters, but then also tons of experience in the transfer portal too. Makes so much sense if they could get Chris Burgess, but would he want that? I mean, that's it's different when you're in the chase for a head coach position and then maybe assistant head coach. But the positive now, any feelings that BYU's not committed financially, that goes out the window because clearly they are committed financially to win at the highest levels. Why for Life tweets, not sure what's more surprising, that BYU moved fast, that BYU paid up, or that Kevin Young agreed. 
the moving fast part, I think, is a huge piece to this story. You think about BYU basketball and BYU sports in general. Hires typically take 14, 15 days. Mark Pope's hire took 15 days. That was pre-NIL. Credit to BYU's administrators for understanding the moment and realizing this is a new era. And it shows early returns on President C. Shane Reese, massive. And his commentary to the BYU students today in their final devotional on campus of the semester in the school year, uh, you can just tell this guy's pumped. And he's excited, and he is truly a sports fan, and he sees the value in what sports bring to the campus experience. And BYU moved quicker than ever before. I mean, I thought in a best-case scenario, Wednesday. Wednesday was best case scenario and that even felt a little bit early by my thought I thought maybe maybe more realistically Friday or next Monday potentially uh, but to get this done on a Tuesday just hours after Colin Chandler you know announces that he's going to be decommitting from BYU and going to Kentucky it squashes that story and gets people excited once again about BYU basketball but credit Tom Homo Brian Santiago Shane Reese Keith Vorkink, because they got the powers to at B and the board of trustees at BYU to understand the importance of altering the process and getting this hire done quick. Because if had you waited until next week, I mean, who's to say you don't have more players go into the portal with all the uncertainty and the negativity and just the anxiousness that comes from a coaching search? Now you just have an, a sense of, okay, what's next? What's the potential, knowing who the leader of the program truly is? Pyro Coog tweets, Very excited about the future of BYU men's basketball. Hopefully we get the staff to help recruit top-ranked players. Jim Roberts, MN, writes, I am astounded that BYU not only loaded up the bag, but they delivered it so fast. Scuttle, he tweets, he or she tweets, if they can complete the circle of landing Burgess as an associate head coach to recruit the current roster and guys in the transfer portal, then this is best case scenario. Honestly, could be an upgrade over the previous staff in relative short order. Maybe when you're trying to compare yourself against Kentucky, that, that's hard to do. But if you can compare it to what Mark Pope did at BYU, definitely. I, I, there's no reason to think Kevin Young can't level it up. Why not? I still believe it'll probably take a few years, potentially, to get it to maybe the heights of, you know, where BYU was, say, in 2020 or this past season. But again, that was fifth place in the Big 12. And fifth place in the Big 12 in the 16-team iteration is going to be excellent going forward. You're going to be a team that's maybe a three or a four seed. But there's still the challenges of BYU. You know, no Sunday play is still a thing when it comes to the NCAA tournament. There's still hurdles that come with it. But... The thing is, is that BYU has got a lot of potential and hope, and I think it just like a new attitude, a new vision, a new kind of outlook. Like, oh, they got a guy that coached all these NBA All-Stars or has worked around the NBA world because every player wants to get to the league, and Kevin Young has endless contacts through his two decades coaching in the NBA. Justin Hicken. Best hire we could get. Also a great guy. I'm excited to cover Kevin Young. I'm excited to learn more about him. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Larry Mortensen, a home run. Just when you thought it was BYU business as usual, Tom Homo hits one out of the park. I've had my moments where I've, you know, gave constructive criticism on Tom Homo when appropriate. But you can't deny this is the type of hire that is a big-time splash. And I think it adds to the legacy of Tom Homo as BYU's athletic director. He's nearing the end. This could be his last hire as AD at BYU. And if he goes out like this, what a splash. You know, and I think an underrated dynamic, too, and I brought it up earlier about the football piece. How does football view this? I don't know specifics on what Kalani's salary truly is, but I feel pretty comfortable saying it's probably not $4 million. And I know football is not in a place right now where they can be complaining about much. But still, when you talk about revenue generating, football still generates the most. 
does that create a little bit of tension that more financial commitment is being placed on basketball? I don't think that'd be the case. I don't think that's in Kalani's DNA, but I've seen it in, in the past at other programs where that can cause friction from afar. You know, seeing that, seeing it in the headlines that, oh, the basketball program's getting this and football program's not getting this. Think about Kentucky football and Kentucky basketball, Stoops and Calipari, they had their kind of exchanges back and forth. So sometimes that can be a thing. Again, I don't see that happening at BYU with Kalani, but, you know, if BYU football turns it around – and knowing the type of money that's out there now for the basketball head coach, you better be ready to pay Kalani or whoever the head coach is in the future some big money to navigate Big 12 football. Church of BYU football tweets, BYU is no longer paying, quote, on the cheap coaches' salaries. With Big 12 money, we can now compete for talent. I'm pumped with the hire, but he must get some assistance quickly who can recruit. Agreed. But I think that's what's exciting. You know, I think it goes beyond simply like, oh, what's he going to do? Is he going to get BYU to the Final Four? No one's talking about that. No one's talking about BYU basketball suddenly becoming this juggernaut. It's, a, it's an optics view. It's like, oh, you got a guy from the NBA who's not only just like an NBA guy, but like the most, one of the most respected NBA assistants in the league. You got him, who Frank Vogel and James Jones were kind of like bummed that they're losing him. And they're blown away about, like, BYU getting him. And it also is a narrative shifter that you're ready to play big time. You're ready to go win and compete in the Big 12. You know, winning is not guaranteed. Just because you pay a lot doesn't mean you're going to guarantee wins. But you're willing to chase it. You're willing to go do whatever it takes to go win at the highest levels. So they're hearing BYU fans. They're hearing the complaints, the, the commentary in the media. And I think that's refreshing. Spider Coog tweets, BYU is committed. They want to win. They are putting in an infrastructure to do that. They are going to compete in the Big 12 for years to come. Greg Shack writes, great hire, Mitch. Mark who? Eh, I don't know if you go Mark who. I mean, uh, I think Mark Pope did an amazing job at BYU. I loved covering my time, you know, covering the Mark Pope era. But the way that it's gone out with Kentucky, look, I, I'm of the belief that he should have said something on – on X or Facebook or Instagram, whatever social platform he wanted to use. But I think Mark Pope did a great job for BYU. You just wish that he would have just said, hey, thanks, going out the door. But it is what it is. He's now at Kentucky, and everyone knew that was his dream job. And that's great. Now BYU moves on. He moves on. It's all okay. Craig Johnson, does he have to keep the beard? I hope so. Speaking of Kevin Young. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> How epic would that be? A rich BYU coach, and then he's got a beard? What is going on? Rob Crosland, freaking insane hire. We are playing with the big boys now. DJ Coog Dog, UK, you can have Pope. John Moore, let's go. Scott Sanders, Mark who? And then the uh, spam bots <laughs> then fill up the, the mentions as well. Been a fun day, though. Uh, also, BYU going to have their press conference coming up this week. And we'll have full coverage of that Kevin Young press conference on kslsports.com. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, getting to know the new head man of BYU basketball should be good. We'll have you all covered on kslsports.com. KSL News Radio, KSL 5 TV, and the KSL Sports Zone. We'll talk to you next time here on the Cougar Tracks Podcast.